North Korean soldiers are now being transferred to Russia's front lines, Ukraine's military intel agency claims. If they are there to fight against Ukraine, what role will these soldiers take on? Let's turn to Dr. Bruce Bennett for more. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. My pleasure. So Russia is reportedly transporting these North Korean soldiers to the front lines via trucks with civilian license plates. Uh, does this mean their participation in the war is pretty much imminent? Well, I think the civilian license plates are indicating that the Russians are short on trucks. They've had a lot that have been damaged. Mm. Yes, it probably does mean that the commitment is imminent, that they will be used, but it also suggests that they will likely be used uh, in mass assaults, uh, effectively cannon fodder, the Russians not really caring for their lives, uh, hoping that they will cause a breakthrough, but not necessarily expecting an, eff an effective commitment. Uh, that suggests these probably aren't all that much special forces. Among North Korea's 200,000 or so special forces, some are really very capable. These may not be at the top end. Well, let's say these soldiers do take part in this fight against Ukraine. Dr. Bennett, what kind of roles do you think they are expected to take on? Oh, I think they will be carrying on mass assaults against the front Ukrainian lines. Think of the Korean War when the Chinese carried out mass assaults against the South Korean and U.S. forces. Uh, that's the kind of thing I would be expecting. Uh, they haven't been in place long enough to get intelligence on where Ukrainian units are, that sort of thing. So this sounds like it's a mass assault kind of approach. Well, in the meantime, the South Korean government delegation is set to attend a NATO, uh, a brief to NATO on Monday and brief them on North Korean military deployment trends. Now, how meaningful will their trip be? Oh, I think this could be a very meaningful trip. Uh, you know, this is a case where the U.S., South Korea, and the NATO countries need to be trying to get Kim Jong-un to stop sending forces. I mean, he sent maybe 12,000 already. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that's the end of what he's planning to send. So we need to be cooperating together to take action to convince him to turn otherwise. Um, and uh, I think also South Korean participation, support of NATO, support of Ukraine is key to Ukraine handling the situation. Well, on top of uh, sending a delegation to NATO, the South Korean government is also reportedly considering dispatching a monitoring group to Ukraine. Now, uh, if they do get dispatched there, what will be their roles and how will their participation be any you know, helpful or meaningful in dealing with this situation? Well, I think this is key. This is the key point. Uh, if I were the South Korean government, I would be sending psychological operations personnel to Ukraine. I would be trying to communicate with the North Koreans by radio, by leaflets, by uh, other means. Um, here are a lot of probably elite class people from North Korea, young people. They're probably being treated very badly by the Russians, uh, you know, very inferior uh, treatment. And uh, they're probably prepared, some of them, to defect. We've heard about defections already from the troops that were previously there in the area. We ought to try and get those defections. We ought to try to also communicate outside information to the soldiers who don't defect so that information will go back to their families, probably many of whom live in Pyongyang. This is exactly what Kim Jong-un doesn't want. He doesn't want defectors. He mm. doesn't want information getting back to his country. If we can convince him that he's in danger of that by giving troops to Russia, maybe he won't send any more. Well, Dr. Bennett, then are you saying that it'll, we'll have to wait more until South Korea decides to you know, deploy lethal weapons to Ukraine? Oh, no, I don't think we have to have South Korea deploy lethal weapons. I think the psychological operations at this stage is key. Now, the lethal weapons will help. That's very helpful, but there's a legal issue, as I understand it, in South Korea. And anything that South Korea can provide to assist Ukraine is going to help. Ukraine is fighting on a very narrow margin by trying to get resources from lots of countries. So South Korea can help with the lethal means, 
but attacking Kim is a matter of attacking his psychology, his fear of outside information, and his fear of his people providing inside information to the outside world. Well, then we have to talk about what may be on Washington's mind. What cards do you think the U.S. is considering to take? I mean, what actions will Washington uh, take in response to North Korean soldiers' actual participation in the war against Ukraine? Well, I think Washington will initially attempt to send more resources to Ukraine to try to counterbalance the North Korean action. Mm -hmm. But I think ultimately Washington is in a similar position to the South Korean government. If we want to break the cohesion of the North Korean forces there, if we want to convince Kim that this really wasn't a good idea, we need to be cooperating in a psychological campaign against his troops. I don't think these are the very top level special forces. I think they're much lower, much more vulnerable to psychological operations. And we ought to be trying to help in that process to convince Kim that this was a really bad idea, mm. um, because I think it was for him. All righty, Dr. Bennett, thank you as always for sharing your insight with us. You have a good one. Thank you very much. My pleasure.